Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Mortis FM, a Star Wars podcast. I am Grayson, one of your hosts. I'm Cole, the second host. Grayson, we are talking about episode four, Day. The Acolyte. I'm glad you remembered that, because I thought in my head it was Destiny, but that was last week's episode. Nope, it is Day, and you want to know why? We're going to go and skip right ahead, because I need to talk about this before it comes out of my mind. The next episode I know is going to be called Night. It will absolutely be called Night. Because you know that makes perfect sense with the actual visual of yep. the episode. the The sun is set; it's gone down, and everything else is going down now too. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, this is a great. I'm I'm a big fan of this episode. Uh, mm-hmm. To no surprise, lots of controversy. So, Grayson, I know you wanted to get this out of the way. Yeah. Why don't we just nip this in the bud? I'm gonna keep it short this time as well because last yeah. time was a little uh, tangential. Yeah. Listen, uh, I'll go and say as well. I liked the episode a lot as well. I had a couple of th- issues in regarding like the pacing and stuff, but other than that, I thought it was a yeah. great episode. Probably one of my favorites thus far in the show, and I cannot wait to see where it goes next. We'll get into the deeper nitty gritty stuff. Let's talk about <laughs> Jedi Kiati Mundi, because I don't know what rank he is at this time. Is he knight? Is he master? I don't know. Jedi, Kiati uh... Mundi has... Uh, he, he is... Cole, let me ask you this. Had, had, would you ever, ever have thought at one point that Kiati Mundi <laughs> would have caused such controversy in the Star Wars fandom? Um, <laughs> Admittedly, yes, because you know how much of a hater of Kiati Mundi You do hate Kiati Mundi, yeah. Um, but uh, in this way, absolutely not. Um, however, I will say, like each and every development with our beloved community, mm-hmm. I'm not surprised. You're not surprised that that this is the way that this is going. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So let, I'm gonna try to make this short and sweet. Other people have talked about this in length. If you follow us on Instagram, you've noticed that I have posted a lot about this clarification in our stories and that this is an issue that I've been very passionate about because it is quite literally reaching, grasping and nitpicking at its absolute finest. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't know, Kiati Mundi was in this week's episode. Cool little appearance. However, many people did not like this because it breaks Star Wars canon. Kiati Mundi was born in 93 BBY. This ruins George Lucas's Star Wars. Let's let's start off with that statement, right? George, Mm -hmm. it it ruins George Lucas's Star Wars. I would give away my, I would put money, I would put my entire life savings in a bet to tell you that George Lucas does not give a flying flip about Kiati Mundi's (laughs) birthday, okay? Let's just get that out of the way, all right? My... I love this. There was a joke that I saw in a video today where it was like, my favorite part of the Phantom Menace was, is when Kiati Mundi goes, I love being 50 years old or something like that. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, that's like, dude, it has nothing to do with the plot. It was never established in anything in the major hierarchy of canon. Okay. And that's, that's one of the biggest things right here. So, so essentially, if you don't know, people took this and they're like, he's born in 93 BBY. That's the legends explanation. Okay. Yeah. Now, according to some canon sources, he was also stated to be at 93 BBY. The best I can tell from 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 what I understand, trading cards seems like a, a reliable source to find your Star Wars info. Trading cards. Um, yeah. Here's the here's the whole step by step process. In Legends, yes, Kiati Mundi was born in 93 BBY, and then that mm-hmm. Ser- Serians, Serians, however you want to pronounce it, they had they their lifespan was listed or whatever. All of that is sourced from a 2003 Wizards of the Coast Alien Star Wars tabletop game book. Okay, mm-hmm. it first appeared in a 1999 Star Wars Insider magazine. All right, an arbitrary date or whatever. Again. All legend stuff. Now, a lot of people are like, well, it also said 93 BBY on the canon tab. But then when the episode came out, they took it away. That's because that's how canon works. If there is something that is listed 
via trading card or encyclopedia or whatever, they are going to put that. But until something that supersedes mm -hmm. that, like a video game, yeah. a movie, a TV show, a regular book or a comic book, there's, there is a hierarchy of canon, all right? We know this. There have been yep. things that have been contradicted. But the, the big three that, that are really like, this is canon, and it's really hard to contradict is the movies, the TV shows, and the video games. The books they can be yeah. a little floozy with, the comics they can be a little floozy with, but especially source books for these movies, and again, trading cards, all kinds of these things. These things change. These are created by people mm -hmm. who are not at the head of the Lucasfilm story group making these stories. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they changed it on Wikipedia because that is no longer canon. It is not canon any longer that Kiati Mundi's species was whatever. Now, it would be one thing if there was a project that took place, whatever, and we like, like in the future, we're like, oh, we saw Keanu yeah. Mundi born. How was he here? Or he says like, ah, like I'm, I'm 70 years old or whatever. Yeah, like, you know, he yeah, never says he that. Say yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so, so, yeah, it, the, 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 yeah, there, there is additional discourse here where people are upset at Wikipedia for adding the canon knowledge here. So what you're saying is that you're upset that Wikipedia is doing what Wikipedia was designed to do, mm -hmm. which was to be an informational website for Star Wars content. Mm -hmm. And so your response for them updating the canonical entry mm -hmm. with canonical information is to go, how dare you do this? Mm hmm what what's going on here guys when honest it, to god please let me know if this is and i don't even know if you if you if this is somehow something that bothers you and i imagine if you're listening to this it probably doesn't bother you but it's fun to talk about but if you're somehow listening and this does bother you please tell me in the comments when you started caring about kiati mundi's age i'd love to know uh <laughs> was it three days ago when the episode came out probably it's also another thing of Kiati Mundi is an alien and wrinkly alien conehead man with white hair. Okay. There again, nothing has ever said that their species age. Nothing like nothing has, has contradicted it other than textbooks that are can kind of can, can are up in the air. This is, and this yeah. is not new. This is not new with, with, with Canon. This is not new with legends. The stuff happened like that in the expanded universe all the time. Prime example, Qui-Gon Jinn's age in like legends, he was like 60 when he died. And in Canon, mm -hmm. he's 42 when he died or 45 or something like that. Same thing. Yeah. Coruscant didn't exist until in the late nineties, as they got closer to the Phantom Menace before then they just called it the Imperial city. And then they were like, they changed mm -hmm. it. They adapted it. This is just how, when you have a galaxy and a story stories that are so multifaceted, so like galaxy spanning, you're going to have little things like this, but this is not one to be worked up over. You know, like I remember what? tales of the empire, people got upset. Cause it was like, Oh, well at the end of Thrawn, like the main Thrawn book, he meets Pelion, but he's already a grand admiral, but in Ter tales of yeah. the empire. And it's like, okay, that's a little bit more valid. But then again, that's it, it's, a, it's these campfire stories, right? You know? Well, okay. Well, well, here's the thing. I, this, this will be a really easy thing to clear up. All right. Mm -hmm. the, the soft retcons happen all the time. Mm hmm. But let me be clear, this is not a retcon of any means because this was Legends information. Mm -hmm. The same Legends where there is an alternate reality where Starkiller murders Obi-Wan and then throws mm -hmm. Obi-Wan's force ghost into <laughs> the exhaust of the Millennium Falcon. And you're telling me that you're upset that there is a canonical entry mm -hmm. over legends. Isn't mm -hmm. that what that's for, homie? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Did you not read the memo in 2008, <laughs> brother? Because it's been a long time, all right? Yeah. There has been a lot of time between that, you know, uh, when when legends was, was established, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, looking for reasons to be mad right mm -hmm. people love to be miserable okay mm -hmm. and there's no reason to be and at that uh that's probably my final thoughts on it i i i, I don't care mm -hmm. it doesn't change anything mm -hmm. 
I, I and, honestly, I just, I, I just, <laughs> it gives me more, more reason to, to, to hate Keanu Mooney because he's just as much of a hater in this episode. Yeah, you know, like, and, and so, so let's talk about that. The, the last thing I'll say in terms of just the birthday thing is likely what happened with these trading cards, these encyclopedias, is what happened is, is because there was nothing that had come before to that changed his birthday, changed his age. What happens is, legend is kind of canon until something else comes along to contradict it. That's mm -hmm. usually how that works. And so likely what they did is the people who made these trading cards, made these encyclopedias, they went, oh, well in Legends, it says he's born in 93, 93 BBY. Nothing else is saying that. I might as well put that. And Lucasfilm's like, go ahead. Yeah. But now yeah. the story has changed where it's like, well, Kiati Mundi is a couple decades older now, you know, like, and yeah. we don't know how old he is, but it's not that big of a deal because again, his species naturally looks really old. He doesn't, he doesn't look like a youthful fellow in the prequels and he doesn't look like a youthful fellow now. So I, right. I, again, as someone who I am someone and you are someone who we latch onto these, like these canon things and we're like, you know, yeah. mental source books, at least to an extent, we're no Sam Witwer or even people who work in Lucasfilm, but like, right. that's the extent of that. People go, oh, okay. This one source book said it's, it's 93 BBY. That was when he was born. Well, then that's what we'll run with until it changed. And it right. did. It I mean, yes, I, I will admit there are at times like the, the kind of uh, what what is it like sanctity of of the archives, right? Mm -hmm. Like where you don't want something to change. OK, Canaan comic, but that's Kanan a prime comic. example, right? That That is a prime example. Um, but for for this instance, I think changing Kiari Mundi's age doesn't do anything you know like it just kind of puts him in this era so people can go ah, 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 you know like like point and him out leo, leo dicaprio meme right yes and then um, it gets into the deeper thing of the of the lore of of kind of why they put him here so this is something that yeah. a lot of people are criticizing which i think i would say is comparatively to the age thing a more valid criticism but also this is my rebuttal so so and i'm sure you know about this as well the other other criticism with kiati mundi being there is Oh, well, he's the guy in the Phantom Menace that says the Sith have been extinct for millennia. And now yeah. he's here in the show directly interacting with these characters. And yet he's too stupid or, or he, do he doesn't know about this. First thing, that's probably the point is that yeah. he, he directly says, oh, what if they're just a ro like a group of rogue force users, a separate sect, a branching pa a part of force users? Because again, the Sith have been gone for a long time. There has been mm -hmm. no indication to believe that the Sith have been anywhere. And any other time that the Jedi have interacted with other force users, it has been splinter groups of force users. They're, they're mm -hmm. branching path or, or a different faction. They're not Sith. Because remember, red lightsaber doesn't mean Sith. Also, at this point, when they have this meeting, the Sith Lord, if this is a Sith Lord, which we assume it is, has not revealed himself yet. They have not right. seen a red lightsaber right. or anything. They only know about May and that May has a master, and that's it. They don't know that the master's a force user. They just know that she is. Okay. I mean, like uh, again, like even even if right, but he he's he's acting in character. Mm -hmm. You know, the he's same like, oh, thing that we a... saw in in ninety nine, where he's like. The Sith have been extinct for millennia. That's impossible. You know they're like, writing it <laughs> off. That the Jedi are comfy. Yeah. They're cozy. The Sith have been gone forever. They and again, it's justifiable cause for someone like to be like, oh, they've always thought this. They've always been like, ah, it's Sith aren't coming back. You know who better? Who better to to reiterate that than the same guy, guy. that said yeah. it in the Phantom Menace, right? So, I mean, I th I think that that's a a, a neat addition, right? That, but like that adds to the punch of it for me. It does. It does. And and it would make it even worse if, like, it's revealed that, you know, he is a part of this group. Like, he does find out and he mm -hmm. is complicit in covering it up. Like, it's just mm -hmm. straight up denial, you know? Yeah. Like, literally, I would be fine with like, that, too. Oh, it, just, uh, it was just some some it's, other force user, you know? Some, and that's all it is. <laughs> Sith are dead. And, and the, right, the last yeah. thing is he wasn't even on Kofar. You know, like that right. was like he's yeah. not with that lineup of Jedi, you know, and I would be willing to put money that th that they ne it, like any I of the characters surprised if we that don't are, see him again. Yeah, I don't think we'll see him again. And I don't think any of these higher these higher echelon Jedi are ever going to find out about this. And if they do, no. they're just going to write it off as, oh, it was someone who had beef with the Jedi. They were a force user. They were trained. Mm -hmm. 
They're just a red light. I mean, we know that the practice of bleeding a crystal is not tied to being, it's not a Sith practice. It's a dark side practice. Dagon Gera does this in Jedi Survivor. He is not a Sith. He's just someone who does not like the Jedi. It's, yeah, I mean, uh, clear clear cut. That, that That's simply what it is. I don't think that it matters uh, in, in the... But but yes, in the concept of like sanctity of sanctity of of information of like wanting to protect like old stories, yeah. Like if there was a, if you were to give me a scene where like we see Yoda and like he's like on a skateboard and like doing stupid stuff, obviously I'm going to be upset about that because that's just straight up character assassination, right? But you talk about your criticism of the book of Boba Fett, and you're like that just doesn't line up with yeah. the, the Boba Fett that you know. And that's a valid criticism, but you're I've get, you're also not sitting over here being like they've ruined Star Wars, you know? It's like yeah, it's not. Well, uh, dude, every single time somebody says, I, I mean, Star Wars has been, I think one one of my favorite things that that I've essentially patented at this point is that Star Wars has been ruined since 1977. Countless uh, times. <laughs> Like it, it is in a constant state of being ruined, and I and I'm saying this like quote unquote, and like like th these are these are air quotes, because people say this. Star Wars has oh like this ruined Star Wars. People hated Empire Strikes Back. Like they they, mm -hmm. they were like this is oh my like is there's nothing like the original Star Wars. You know, uh, I saw this every, video today. Yeah, that was that was so well done. Where he's basically like Star Wars fans, if like Empire Strikes Back came out today and they're like, oh, you can use the force to pull a lightsaber to you now. Like that's like th the force didn't work like that before. Like he didn't oh, even he's, train. He's Luke's father. That's so stupid. What the yes, heck? That was one of the things they were, they were like when Lando shows up, they're like woke. Like, you know, it's it's yeah. just dumb stuff like that. Why, don't, like, why it, don't they need spacesuits inside the inside the space worm? That's so yeah. dumb. How did <laughs> yeah. Boba track them all the way there? How did they get there before? Uh, like they're so uh, oh my goodness like i'm i i'm i'm done with it 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 is it is I'm amusing tired. to me at this point when like when i saw that people were talking about kiari Mooney in this way like i just laughed uh, cuz i was like of course you know it's just it's so funny to me because it never gets old there's going to be something next episode that is going to be that we're going to be talking about next week same problem, you know, um, and, and, and honestly, like I'm starting to love it at this point because you just, you just love to watch them go. Like you love to just watch them just get so upset over it's, this. There's a, there's a person in the community. I, I loved this message. I love what she's, what she said. And it's like, truly like, you know, we're someone, we're people who we love star Wars. Like that's been always been yeah. our memo. And that's kind of been the, the whole thing. Like you said, we're trying to keep, keep it positive because there ain't nothing that's going to stop me from loving stars. And if there is something that eventually, or it's like, I, it, and which is never going to happen. It's just not, uh, unless of course Yoda starts doing, you know, skateboarding and backflips and everything. <laughs> well, he, he already does backflips, but skateboarding backflips. specifically, um, I am someone that's not going to be deterred by this, but basically she said, um, she was like, if it's gotten to the point where you hate Star Wars this much, I, you should take a break. Like you really should take yeah, a break, you know, like re reevaluate really, yeah. what you love about Star Wars. Think <laughs> deeply within yourself and find the reason you fell in love with it in the first place. And I think you'll come back a lot more open minded in the first place. And even if it's if you come back and you're like, I still don't like the Acolyte for valid reasons, whether it's the pacing, not a big fan of the characters, maybe just yeah. not a big fan of the story. Listen, you and I have preached this. And it probably it will be ongoing as this show continues because this has probably been the worst the fandom has ever been in terms of the divide and the toxicity. I, I truly believe that. But like, uh, there are yeah. things in Star Wars that just don't suit our fancy. Like, no, not at all. Yeah, not, like yeah. there's so much external stuff. Like, am I really interested in in the Padme books? Admittedly, no. Like, I'm not really interested in that. Would I read them? Maybe yeah. one day. But like, am I way more interested in reading the Legends Heir to the Empire trilogy? Yes. And that's fine. It's not like I have to go like, you know, you don't have to do any of this. We, we are now in an era where we have so much <laughs> Star Wars content that you do not have to watch everything. You know, I, I almost feel like at some point in the future, we're going to have to start putting like a... Uh timestamps for disclaimer sections because this yes. is a disclaimer section of, of us saying by the way we aren't blind faith shills mm -hmm. i'll say this real fast i don't like book of boba fett mm -hmm. connor from beyond the dune sea i'm sorry 
I do not like the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> That's I kind don't. of a meme, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um there there's like a but 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 that's okay, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be so upset. Like, and, and there's still stuff in those things that I find enjoyment of. There's right. still some of the coolest of Star Wars in the Book of Boba Fett. There's still some of the coolest of Star Wars in the Rise of Skywalker, you know. And like, it's fine. The, George's Star Wars. Uh, hell, you guys thought that George ruined George's Star Wars when the prequel when the prequels came out. That should the be a buffer. The always sticker. greener on the other yeah, side, man. I, when George was here, he, he yeah. ruined Star Wars. Now when he's gone, oh, get him back! It's like, get him oh my back. god, we miss George so much. But when you had him, you trashed on him. You mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's everybody's got something to complain about. And 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 it too. Yes, it's totally fine if something is is critically bad mm-hmm. but sort sort stuff out here are you just nitpicking are you just mm-hmm. mad that it's not george's star wars what are you protecting here but to 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 kind of parrot what uh the person you were referencing said uh when they say like reevaluate your love for star wars like take a step back i'm gonna take it a step further just reevaluate yourself dog i mean if mm-hmm. you're getting this viscerally upset over someone changing <laughs> Kiati Mundi's age where it has no relevance to the plot or anything else and you're upset about it. Reevaluate. Please mm-hmm. just go find out what's up and then come back and go, I can't wait to just like just take a breather and mm-hmm. not have a seizure when I find out that someone is just a couple decades older. Anyway, Mortis FM, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we're talking about uh, Acolyte um, Episode 4, Day. Day. Um, and, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's literally just called Day. Um, and, uh, yeah, to be honest, what a day. Because, yeah. Um, Let's talk yeah. about the like the actual episode itself, other than Kiati yeah. Mundi and every and everything. Let's we, right. we both uh, we start, said it from the get go. We we enjoyed this episode. Yeah, quite a initial bit. Initial impressions. I think uh, I think it was good. I think it's very consistent with the rest of the show so far, mm-hmm. which has uh, shown to me that it, it is a good show thus far. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, we're we're basically at the halfway point now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, wow, I can't believe we're already here, but I say that this every single time. Fast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a good episode. Um, I think like there, there was a couple things that I, that I felt a little bit off with, but overall I'm comfortable with how it went. Dude. I mean, yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, just because again, we're also people who don't like to focus on like negatives and these aren't even negatives. These are just kind of like, and eh, didn't really hit for me. It's just kind of the, the overall pacing of kind of the middle of the episode where it's kind of going back and forth between the Jedi and Osha with, um, uh, yeah. B- Basil is his name, which I think is just really funny. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's like, he's they're kinda, going back he's between that. I like that little guy. Yeah. Oh, he's great. I think that is a character that is an EU alien going all the way back to the Han Solo trilogy of books from the expanded universe. So there you go. Um, But like it was going back and forth between them and then uh, May and Chimere. Um, And so it was Mm -hmm. just like, you know, they're like, oh, let's just get to Kelnaka. And there's some good dialogue sections in there, especially with with uh, with May and Chimere. Definitely mm-hmm. planting the seeds, but I mean, let's just, let's just, I, I think we should just jump to the end. We, cat, we gotta. Cat, cat's, cat's out of the bag, yeah. Dude. Uh, you, so you didn't watch it the night it came out. I, I just I want didn't. your, just give me your, like, raw thoughts on that ending. Like, okay. like from when um, May gets to the hut to the end, yeah. you know? Yeah, okay, so, so I, I immediately knew, mm-hmm. I was like, the Sith Lord is here. Um, mm-hmm. And I have some additional thoughts after that, which which yep. we'll we'll get to. I'm, I I feel like we're on the same page with that. Yeah. Um. But I w- I thought to myself, as soon as she gets to Kilnaka, Kilnaka is gonna be dead. Um. And man, like that kind of reveal where the camera kind of like swivels over to see just this visceral cut, horizontal, still fresh. Yeah, still fresh. You see it just sizzling, right? Um. But dude. Oh, okay. When out of it, it, it's the camera's not focused on on, on him. Oh my um, goosebumps, dude! You're just seeing—he's levitating like a ghost, you know. 
And and I gotta say, like, in certain kinds of so so like that sort of levitation, which is is basically like puppeteering at that point. That sort mm -hmm. of levitation, um, it it's a very thin line between horrifying and goofy, mm -hmm. and. I think they managed to nail the horrifying because the mm -hmm. horrifying reminded me of Hereditary, uh, where uh, actually I'm not going to spoil the horror, uh, you know, for for anyone that hasn't seen it, but they do really creepy levitation based horror, mm -hmm. um, and it was very emanate like it, it was it immediately made me think of that and i was like i felt the fear okay Dude, I being out of focus just seeing this silhouette move I down know. the camera and you're like I, I, and then he and then he lands and just starts walking slowly mm -hmm. so when he walks up to, to to osha and osha turns around and he just like gets right there just stares Dude. at him you, you can see like the glint of his, his eye. eye yeah which is just oh it's just so the good yeah mm. Um, and then I when when he ignited the saber, I thought he killed. I thought he killed Osha for a second. Me too, because like the way like, that it's it on. framed, it like it, it looks like that he stabs her, but in actuality, he just yoink, like just pushes her to the side. And I I think there's a reason for that. I've been hearing some speculation yeah. about why maybe people like b because of Osha and May being tied. Like there's a reason why they like their life might be connected in a way. But yeah, well, like he, just, he literally just. Yeah. So okay. So so I'll, I'll go ahead and mention this before I forget about it. Mm -hmm. A reason that he might be making sure that she doesn't die is because if Plagueis is doing experiments on creating life, mm -hmm. might not want to get rid of that so soon. Mm -hmm. You know. So so then that leads to the question. So like I mean, if Plagueis involved, which I'm I'm hearing a lot of theories. If, if Plagueis is involved, yeah, yeah, obviously. I I've heard a lot of theories that. Um. I, I don't know. I, I've heard a lot of rumor theories, but I mean, I guess it still comes down to, do we think this Sith is, do we, do we think they are the master of the apprentice? I think it's the apprentice. The apprentice. Absolutely. I think so. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty sure both of us ha like, like 95% know who this person is. It's gotta be Chimere, right? It's gotta be Chimere, man. Like the, the, all of it's there. You know, the setup was there from the dialogue to the bag he was wearing to yeah. literally like the timing of it all. Right. It, did, I, when, when he grabbed the bag and walked away. And this was before I saw the reveal at the end of the episode. It was like, I'm going to get you some water. And he grabs the bag. I was like, that looks like a helmet size. bag. Yeah. Like, <laughs> literally, he, he yeah. stuffed the helmet and his like weird like cloak in there and was like, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, but, but like it kind of, you know, it just reminds me of like Palpatine, right? Like hiding in plain sight sort of thing. But he knows the Sith code. He's proficient in combat. Like he disarmed May um, during an ambush, by the by. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, like, there's just there's so many there's so many signs there. So we're go I am assuming that this is Chimera, but I'm not going to you know be disappointed if it's not. I'll be I'll be like, what a brilliant red herring. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of yeah, what I'm hoping. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping they want you to think it's Chimere because one, the way he's yeah. speaking of like, like Osha says there, there's two big indicators, not Osha, sorry, May. May is like, while they're walking there, uh, like, Oh, have you ever seen his face? And he's like, you know, I haven't. And, and things like yeah. that. And then he's like, uh, like he was like, Oh, what, like what kind of, like, I think she says something about like what kind of deal you guys have made. And he's like, uh, we didn't exactly, you know? And, and he's being very vague. And then mm -hmm. the big indicator is then well there's i guess two other big indicators is uh he's speaking to her and he's he brings out the whole thing of like oh uh osha and soul seems to be really close or, or like he's like he was yeah. like what was his name master soul and you're kind of like how does he why does he know that how does he know that like yeah. it's really strange for him to know because like yeah he did interact with soul and all of them but it was very sparse and it wouldn't have been enough for him to gather the information that osha and soul kind of have a close relationship in a way yeah and, and then the last thing oh go ahead well i was i was also going to say like a chimere is also the only person other than like uh the the, the jedi who used a tracker and may who used Chimere's directions that knew where Kelnaka was. Kelnaka, yep. Um, and so, obviously, the Sith got there first. How would the Sith also know where Kelnaka was? I mean, obviously, like, they could track them down, but mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's just th there's a lot of signs there. Um, and then, he gets, but, then he gets hung upside down, and then it's like May does that face turn where she's like, actually, I'll just go to Kilnaka and I'll tell him what I know. And yeah. that way, like, because now that I know that, that Osha is alive, which that was a twist that I was not fully expecting. I would like a little bit more. I'm kind of hoping as we get more of their history or more of that, like, to kind of figure out why. Because based on the information we know of them, I was like, why do you care about Osha so much right now? I was like, you were you tried to kill her as a kid. So I, like, I think it's I, I think it's a very strong obsession. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, like, I he, think it's based yeah. on a lie. I think she has been she has thought May has been gone for so long that yeah. like or sorry that Osha has been you know dead or whatever because obviously mm -hmm. like she thought Osha, whoever was trained her told like did not tell her that Osha was still alive because it wasn't like right. it was like kept secret like Osha was part of the Jedi for at least a good long while but but then you think about Kymir getting strung up or whatever, uh. But right before that, when he's like, I'll go get you some water, she's like, I need a break. He's the one, like, he does not seem tired at all. He's, like, running, and yeah. then he's, like, immediately, like, no, you've got to do this, you know? He's like, look, come on, we got to go do it, you know? Like, he's, like, trying to, like, push, not in, like, an aggressive way, but kind of like, oh, we're almost there, you know? He's like, very insistent on mm -hmm. making sure that it's done. And yeah. I feel like that he might be insistent because he maybe his own master is expecting for these mm -hmm. things to be done. You never know. Or like he like he's trying to impress his master or, you know, uh, because I, I'm just willing to bet like he is. Uh, I think this apprentice. guy, I think this is the acolyte and it's not May. Yeah. You know, I think it's the late, it's the onion, you know, the onions have many. Yeah, he? you're right. He <laughs> might not even be the apprentice. He's, yeah, he's probably like. He could be like a runner-up, you know, like one of the many chosen. That'd be. Right? I mean, you think about. I think I referenced this last week. You think about the. I mean, he could be either the apprentice or like you know, kind of a venomous type character where he's a second mm -hmm. apprentice. You know, uh, like what if Tenebris is his master and then this this guy gets dumped and then that's when Tenebris goes to find Venomous and Plagueis or you know whatever. But like he also he could be like a mall type where it was like we think about legends Plagueis and Palpatine yeah. were still master and apprentice and then also P Palpatine was training Maul yes with the permission of Plagueis eventually like he kept that secret yeah. for a while you know well um clear clearly he is capable of doing the job so mm -hmm. it makes me wonder of like what he needs May for and maybe he's trying to get May to kind of be his apprentice to usurp the master right that that is very, the legacy of the Sith, Sith centric right? um so yeah I, I think one thing I think it was like the last thing that uh Keimer says you know without like asking for me to come back is that he just says like he'll kill you you mm -hmm. know and, I'm and that like, and that hmm. almost feels more like a f like he doesn't say it that menacing but it almost feels like a if you do this I'm he'll going to come you. kill you you know yeah. like um because I mean he's 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 not that far like he's hung up like he could i mean if he is the sith he could get out of it no problem for all and then all the yeah. reasons we've mentioned before now part of me hopes i'm wrong in fact a big part of me hopes i'm wrong where i mean even if he like i'm if, if he is the sith i'm i'm i won't be mad about that i just i really like the mystery and i don't want the mystery to be revealed too soon and so like it, i would be intrigued to be like oh if they reveal it actually pretty quick and then there's another part of the layer the the twist right well i think i think yeah i i feel like what it is is that it's going to be revealed that he is the sith but then it will also be revealed that he is a much smaller fish than we think you mm -hmm. know um mm -hmm. which is like he's not going to be the master there is something more Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, there, there's a lot to go through here, but all of the Jedi charge towards him, and just with one push, just shoves them all back, uh, straight into the camera, and ending the ending the episode. Which, Dude, when it happened, I was literally like, no, like I was like, yeah. I was like, I want to see. Which that's why I think next week is going to be like a banger episode dude yeah and i think it's as i said before i think it's gonna be called night because as soon as it's revealed that kelnaka is dead you see the sun uh, that visual dude yeah the, the the sunset goes and night begins and uh yeah so i'm mm -hmm. very excited for that i think it's gonna be i just really want to see some good fights i want to see how it how how this plays out because obviously yeah. this is like from what we had seen from the trailers, this looks like the big fight moment. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's going to happen here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, <sighs> hmm. 
I also worry if next, not worry. I mean, it, it could be done well, but I also, part of me thinks like, what if next week's another flashback? And then it's like, we have to wait another <sighs> week, you know, which is very, which is very much possible, but like we're on the back half. And you also, when you think of like the eight episode layout of like Ahsoka, episode five was Shadow Warrior. That was the, yeah. that yeah. was the episode that was the Anakin Ahsoka one. And it's like, not, not I'm not saying that's like, it, it will be up to that caliber, but like, that definitely would, seems to be like an like a climax, you know, or like a, at least a really big part of the story. Um, let, me Let me see if they if they released uh, the episode names. Oh, I don't know. Because now I'm kind of curious. That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, there's also nope. I, they have not. I didn't think so. No, they have not. I think they did it for the like they do it for the animated shows, but they don't do it for the live action shows. Um, I will say though that the the next episode is the same director for uh day which is uh alex garcia lopez so okay um it looks like they directed both of these episodes the, so uh, whether that mm -hmm. confirms anything or not it, to me i feel like it kind of does yeah uh, i would but, i would say so oh the last episode's on my birthday that's funny hey, hey. Acolyte, acolyte birthday uh, <laughs> uh, what? Well, so other than like the Sith, um, I think, I mean, I, again, I don't have like a whole lot to talk about in terms of like the, the pacing of the episode. I do like this kind of like the trek and I like some of the, the conversations, I, a lot of development here in terms of like kind of building out the relationships and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I really like the buildup of the relationship between Osha and Jackie um, they're kind oh, of yeah. bonding of it's like cute. being both yeah. being at least have been trained or currently being trained by soul. Yeah. Um, but I, that makes me fear for the worst for Jackie. I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I don't think Jackie's making it out next week. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, all of the nameless Jedi are definitely done. They're done. Oh yeah. Yeah. I would honestly I also, be really upset if your died. I'd be very upset. Really? At this point. He was a major op for, for mm -hmm. us in like the first episode. But I mean, I actually really, I, I think he's really great now. I yeah. I, I, I like the type of character he is where he's kind of a stickler. Like he really is a stickler, but it's like, it's gotten to a point now where it's kind yeah. of, a, where he's like kind of trying to put on this, like this brave face or like this serious face, but it's called, it doesn't always like, He's hit, a stickler, you know? but he's a good guy. You know, like yeah. he feels like a, a a little bit more strict than Obi Wan, if that makes sense. You know, yeah, he's like he's a step the... up from Obi Wan. <laughs> he's the hall monitor. That's what he is. Oh my god, yeah, he one hundred percent is the hall monitor, <laughs> yeah. and he does a damn good job at it. Yeah, yeah. he's like, I will not take th from this from the likes of you. You know, yeah, um, yeah we, we get some good conversations. Also, do like the whole. When they have to go on the ship, and she's like, "But I better not have to wear any of those civilian robes," and then immediately cuts to her wearing the civilian robe. Yeah. Yeah. That's really great. I, I listen. I'll, I'll say this. I love the cast of this show. I really enjoy. Them. Oh, me too. One hundred percent. I think. Yeah. I, think I, I, I think, namely, uh, Amandala does a, a, a like a stellar mm -hmm. job. Um, she she feels so Star Wars to me. I don't know why. Like yeah. when she's like whispering over, I believe it's the Jackie, and she's like, "Does he or they? You know, whatever." Like, you know, yeah. and she, I was like, "This is that the little moments like that the the moments of levity." Um, like I was reading the um, like I was reading the like the uh, Edge of the Empire core rulebook today, and it was talking about like making your campaign feel like Star Wars. And there's yeah. little things in there that you want it to feel like Star Wars. And it's like those moments of like fun or levity, you know, that add a lot. Or it's not like, it's not like, I know a big criticism of like some projects is like, oh, it feels like MCU humor where it's kind of more slapstick oh, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this didn't feel like that to me where it's like, oh, it's it, weird. It's weird what? and it's like tongue in cheek, you know? It, it feels kind of like grounded humor, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. It doesn't, it's not like it's waiting for the punchline. It just, it feels like kind of casual humor. Yes. Um. But yeah, it's, I think that's the, mo the moment is is funny, not the not the joke, not the but, the punchline. Well, well, like for instance, when when they when they lose uh Basil, and and mm. Yord is like, I guess we'll need a tracker to track our tracker, and like he yeah, he yeah, yeah. like he seems like he seems like visibly fr frustrated. 
Um, and I, th- I think I said to myself, I was like, say that three times fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, um, oh, okay. But uh, also, I, I don't know. I just thought that that was uh, funny. It, it, it reminds me of um, like Luke and Han, where Han's like, what, you think a princess and a guy like me? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just very casual humor. Uh, or it's great. like, you know, 3PO's type of humor where it's just like, he's just saying like things you're like, oh my gosh, like there's 3PO yeah, doing that again, yeah. you know? Um, also, another moment that I thought was like, I was like, Osha, you silly. I was like, you, you, you were very silly. When they go through that those woods and there's those giant like beetle things that are like those, they're nasty. By the way, that made me itch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're <laughs> and they're like all in the trees and they're sleeping. I'm like, and then Osha goes, I'm like, Osha, you're dumb. <laughs> Like, why did you do that? You know, I'm I'm going to be honest. I gave her the benefit of the doubt. Like the first couple episodes, <laughs> Osha is a little dumb, just a little <laughs> bit like like with, with the with with the corpse of Torben. Like she literally went right over oh to him and then picked up the murder weapon <laughs> uh, or like picked up the poison. Vile. Yep. Uh, but then also uh, when when like they were kids. I don't remember what it was, but like, oh yeah, she just walked out to the Jedi and just completely outed the entire coven. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't know, like she, she just doesn't really think a lot before she yeah. does these things. Um, and she's great. I love her character. I, I really me do. Too. Um, but there's so many moments where like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, she, what are you doing? No. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, there was a line right after this that I literally went, that's kind of, like I I get the sentiment, but I think the way Jackie was saying it definitely came across as more. Which is again the kind of the point of the show is mm-hmm. when Soul then just like takes out this creature, and oh, this is definitely going to come into play next episode, for sure. They mentioned that they're attracted to light. Uh, they're attracted to the oh, lightsabers, yeah. and they're yeah. like, okay, like night's Ooh. falling, we should get out of here soon. I think those are going to be involved somehow. Those little those bug things because they didn't follow up again. So I think it's definitely yeah. like the whole two part thing. But then, she, but then Osha's like, she's like, I feel bad, like you know, I touched that thing and then it died. And Jackie immediately is just like, it's an honor to be able to see something become one with the Force. And she, and and I was just kind of yeah. like, okay, but like. Osha has a point. Like, I would feel bad, too. It was like... I feel like if I were there and, like, I wasn't a Jedi and I I would go like, mm, sure, but it yeah. became one with the Force by getting cut in half, you know? Yeah, when it was uh, very needless, you know? It's like... But but it, it, it is a very Jedi thing to say. So, mm. totally on brand. You know, just how, like, Yoda in the prequels was constantly just like get over it man you know mm-hmm. and <laughs> um, i think there's like obviously there's a sentiment for that of like when someone passes away naturally you know it's like yeah. death is a natural part of life this was not a natural death you know no this was it was violent it was uh 50 50 in a way uh <laughs> i also think that line doubly confirms that some like that jackie might die or some oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if jackie lives but your dies and she's like because you know they were kind of close in a way of like yeah. you know it's an honor like she says that so frivolously but then when your dies or somebody it's, else or all these other jedi and then she yeah. like it kind of hits of like they didn't have to die and this person killed them that's i oh i i like that that's kind of cool that's some subtle foreshadowing right there I, yeah, mm. man. Uh, I'll give. I'll Venmo you like five dollars if you're right. Because <laughs> that, I mean, that's, that, that's, a, that's like, a cool little connection there. I, uh, I think. I yeah, I think that's just like a on. just like a a little plot beat to be like, oh, she says it so off the cuff, you know. But yeah. like, because again, it doesn't come back to play in that episode. So I don't know. That, that's that's interesting. Um, also, <laughs> there was somebody that made a joke about Basil the other day. When they were, oh that oh it was Tony Star Wars Sith go subscribe to him he you probably already do he's got 15k subscribe congrats right now. 15k uh, do oh, it congrats man um hey why hey if you're here and you're enjoying it I, I don't typically do this we're not that type of people subscribe to us if you like it um, yeah that too do that do that and if you don't don't fine um, fine I get but, it. <laughs> but Tony. Tony said he was like Basil's the Sith Lord because they were like once he screams and the Sith Lord pops up you don't see Basil anymore like or Basil or whatever and you're like you're like bro imagine <laughs> imagine that funny little guy as a Sith Lord also the way he runs around cracks me up where he's like 
Like he like he, he like walks with his arms like this. I I honestly really hope that his species is much more uh, akin to like humanoid behavior, and mm -hmm. him in actuality is just cracked out all the time. Mm -hmm. Like my my man is my my man is is high off his rocker, and yeah. he's uh and, and and that's why that's why he's a tracker. The other the other uh, of his species is just like oh yeah that's that's it's basil. It's like Yoda <laughs> with the with other of his species because that's Gattel right. speaks completely normal English. She just goes hello, Master Qui Gon, you know, and then and then Yoda's like <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and I, I think that that's so great. Like, I love it. I don't, I don't remember there being all that much discourse about it. I just remember there being discussion when that came out, mm -hmm. and I was like, I think that that's the funniest thing that because I, I don't, I think I was talking to someone about it, and they were like, oh, I don't like that. That his species doesn't do that, and I was like, I'm gonna be honest, I like that it better. is, yeah, I like it better because that just tells us. That Yoda is just weird, and I love he's that. He's a weird guy, he's, bro. He's just a weird little guy, you know. Like I think that that's, I think that's great, you know. I Yaddle's mean, the original pitch like, for him was like he was evening. literally like a gnome, dude. He was like a little gnome guy, and then they yeah. made him more into like a frog, and then kind of an alien. And it was like he's supposed to be just this funny little old man that yeah. you're like, oh, and he's also this like this legendary warrior from 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 you know centuries past um it's cool stuff i i like that i think that would be his, that would be fun if, if that is it i don't, I don't want to keep calling him basil like the like the top i'm gonna say basil it's got is it did they say it's basil basil brazil you know whatever you oregano <laughs> yeah garlic powder right paprika Tracker. i think that's about all the thoughts that i have i, I think it's uh, i mean uh, the really the big stuff yeah. was of course our little podium that we got on about uh Kiati Mundi and <laughs> we then, talk about and then, like the the discourse more than we do it, the episode sometimes uh it, like and it's just I guess that's the way it is but you know hey we have a platform and like I'll be I'll be honest like this is the last thing I'll say uh, and then we'll do our, our chat pack um Yay! is that like uh which will be I, I love our chat packs um is like to be honest the, like the whole Kiati Mundi thing uh really really bummed me out like j just because mm. i was like 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 the man, community response yes yes yeah. like uh, i was just like guys like yeah i'm like th this is this is just sad like this is it, just it sad is. And, and and like as someone it who is. i love star wars with every fiber of my being and like it's like you know such a big reason why we started this channel is to be like how often we were talking about it and things and now it's just because of this show, like, and not for things that I, I think are the, the case, but just because of just so much discourse, it can be discouraging. But like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I just want to say thank you to everybody who sends the kind words. We've, we've gotten a lot of new people that have come along who have been attracted yeah. to our stuff to be like, oh, like, like just so many nice comments about people saying like, you know, we give, you know, genuine, genuine criticism and and things like that um, and just actually have like a genuine conversation. So to, to you guys truly like it's it's why i i have no i have no like um i have no problem continue to continuing going despite all of the uh, hubba dub or whatever you want to call it <laughs> like um Just thank you for reminding us why we continue to be a force for good mm -hmm. yeah um yeah just really uh thanks for sticking around and being positive and for helping us perpetuate um just good feelings throughout the community because that's really what it's all about it's about yep. you know bringing people together and uh turning darkness into light so well said better said than i that's a that's a skill you have my friend you have a you have a way of putting things very succinctly i have um, a particular eloquence what can i say <laughs> Uh, shout out to to Will, Will of the Force. He was, I, I think I told you this. Maybe hey, let's off give the a record, shout out to Christina Applegate. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a, you it's have to an, explain that joke now. It's an Eric Andre. Um, oh my gosh, show, dude. Um, <laughs> reference. I don't even remember who they're interviewing, but Hannibal just out of nowhere just said, hey, let's give a shout out to Christina Applegate. <laughs> and you just hear clapping with Christina Applegate's face put on the screen. I'm so sorry. Please proceed. Shout I hope out that to there's Eric Will Andre's fans in the, in the uh, I'm sure there's at least one. Uh, oh, no, man. I was going to say that that Will, he was like, he was like, dude, 
uh, Cole has such a good way of just putting things so succinctly. He's like, I can write like an entire like multi like multi paragraph, oh. and then he can write one or two sentences, and and then maybe like, yep, from Will's perspective, him to be like. <laughs> Yep, that's what I meant to say. So that's one of that's one of Cole's talents. You, you said Will said that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Will, you flatter yeah. me. Yeah. Well, she said I did it as well, but I was like, I don't do it as good as you. So that's what we do. <laughs> Let's go to number fifty-two on the chat pack. Let's go. Ooh. I like the look Ooh, of that a girl dragon. A Shark girl reference. dragon. <laughs> uh, you're starting to see our dumb, our dumb. References. Yeah, it's, to it's, it's coming. Are, it's coming through. It's not it's coming Star through. Wars, yeah. Imagine that you have your own star cruiser to leisurely cruise the galaxy and host all your friends and family. What would you name it? Why? What did you just do? <laughs> <laughs> I did the. I did the uh, so 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 when you said, uh, "Imagine you have your own star cruiser," I was like this. I was. And then, uh, and, and then I imagine the Shaquille O'Neal meme where he's like, yes. <laughs> so then, so then I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm so sorry for only audio listeners. It's just it, that, that's a purely visual meme. What is that? Um, isn't that from? Isn't I want to like say it's hot, from Hot Ones. The Hot Ones, yeah, yeah. dude. Um, okay, so can you repeat the question again? Because I was too busy <laughs> memeing to listen. Imagine that you have your own star cruiser to leisurely cruise the galaxy and host all your friends and family. What would you name it and why? Ooh. I'm also going to say what type of cruiser this is. Like straight up cruiser? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So not like a not like a freighter, like a cruiser. I mean, I guess if you wanted it to be like a freighter, you know, but obviously it has to be a sizable enough ship to roam the galaxy in, you know? Let's look for a list. I'm popping open <laughs> a cold one I, with the boys. One that I really like, but it's more it's more militaristic, so I don't know if this is if this is valid or not. Ooh. Ooh. What well, well, one that's Imperial is a Raider class Corvette. It's an Imperial ship that's um it's the one that Iden Versio uses. I really like oh, that one. Oh yeah. That is that one that's a really good one. That's a good ship, dude. Uh Goodness. I also I mean, shout out to my, shout out to my KOTOR fans. Uh, Hammerhead Corvettes are pretty dope too, uh, if I do say so myself. I do like Hammerheads or cruisers? I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, light Corvette. It's a star cruiser, right? Like it doesn't have to be like a. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like this massive ship. Like, it, like I'm saying, like in my mind, it, I mean, if you want it to be like, if you would, if you were to tell me, hey, I want a super star destroyer. Yeah, I mean, like, go for it, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, it's like I'm thinking like anything as small as like the Millennium Falcon or like the Stinger Mantis, where it like it holds like a small family of people, or as big as you know, like an actual cruiser, like a Mon Calamari cruiser, a star destroyer, things like that. Um, but, uh, I, I need to go get that star cruiser book, the starships and speeders. That's a really good one to look in. in oh for yeah. Ships. That, that yeah. one is really great. Well, what about, what about the Luthen's Fondor Hallcraft? There you go, man. Do, there do you, you go. think that would count? Yeah, dude. That carries yeah, more than, that carries yeah, at least 10 people. He's got people. some stuff in there and that's like. That that is probably my favorite ship in Star Wars, but it's right so right next to the cool. uh, Arc One Seventy. Yeah, you fit um, many people on that one though. Nope. <laughs> me and Grayson <laughs> and and Astromech maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's really about it. Yeah, we'll probably get probably up. that. Uh, although here's here's a little like. But you gotta give it a name. Oh yeah, you're right. And why? Mm. It's your own custom version. Did you give yours a name? Was I, I too busy? I haven't chosen one yet. Oh. <laughs> uh, the, I'm going to call it the Star Wars Family Craft for me and my family and friends. Also known as TSWFCFMF. <laughs> so so it's the it's the <laughs> that's, that's really what I'm, yeah um i'm really trying to think of a sh I, okay one ship that i've always loved is um the uh the rogue shadow from the force unleashed Whoa, that one that's is a great one that, ship oh my god it's goodness. a great ship and i and you, and you played did you play force unleashed on the ps2 or wii or psp 
at all? I did. I played it on the 360, on the Wii, and the PSP. Okay. So yeah. on, you remember on the Wii and PSP version, in between missions, you, you could would like. around in it, yeah. Yeah, you could like go and you would see like Rom Coda would be at the table. That was or, the, like, such a. Ugh, it was so good. That was I I that's one of my biggest things that I wish was in the the modern or not the modern but like the the newest the most the high high tech version the 360 PS3 version the the um, mainstream version probably yes yeah but th those PS2 Wii and PSP versions were in my opinion my favorite versions because I just think they yeah. felt more well they had a lot more content in general they did uh, they they had a lot more because because I think like Xbox 360 was just kind of. Like that, it was just the story beginning to end, mm -hmm. right? Whereas uh, those had, you know, the 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 the, the arena fights. You yeah. can walk around in the rogue shadow, and and it had those extra missions before they came out as DLC for Xbox. Yeah, um, and even then, those Jedi Temple missions were way different in the in the, those versions of the game than it was in the than the 360 version, because in the and basically just different games, to be honest. Yeah, they really are. Like, you end up going to Bespin to save another senator. Like, you yeah. go to, um, you actually go to Narsh, or like, there's like, it, it, they skip some missions in the, the weird main version. But anyway, the Rogue Shadow is one that I really like. That was always one that felt very homey to me. I don't know why, just because I guess I, because that PS2 version of that game was such a comfort game. Oh, yeah. To me, uh, okay. I mean, I played that at least a hundred times but if i, I had mean, to go for for like a bigger version a bigger ship I, hmm. I okay i think i'm gonna i think i might change my mind from the fondor okay you have one guess as to what i'm gonna choose can i can i at least ask if it's bigger or smaller i honestly don't know size wise i i think it's probably a either about the same <laughs> It's either about the same, or it's bigger, or it's smaller. Hope that helps. <laughs> okay. Um, um, <laughs> I just want to play the guessing game now. Uh, is it? Is it in the? Is it in like the movies? No. Is it Old Republic? As, yeah. Is it the same class as the Ebon Hawk? Yeah, it's the Ebon Hawk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love the Ebon Hawk. Yeah, that is. Uh, I I would deck it out. I would definitely change the paint job because I'm not much mm -hmm. of a reds kind of guy. Yeah, it's more like burgundy. But um, yeah, I think it, yeah, it's either that or the Fondor. I would say, and to actually give it a name, um, no joke. I think I would really like to call it the Star. Um, hey man, that's just cool. Because I don't know. I just think that's neat. It is pretty cool. Honestly, I I do think I'm gonna go with this Raider class Corvette. Do it. It's really it's really cool. So the one that was uh the one that was um oh what a cool name. Wait, was it? That's super weird. What was the? Am I dumb? <laughs> you, you don't know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. Okay, so <laughs> Iden Versio's ship was a Raider class or was a Imperial Raider two class Corvette. It was a 150 okay. meter long assault starship. Okay. Right. Uh, not too big, not too small. Got a good size to it. It's a, it's a, like kind of like the Imperial equivalent of like the, like Tanta four. Yeah. Um, however, it's called the Corvus is Corvus oh. was not. What was the name of the planet in Mando season two? Was it also called the Corvus, or am I dumb? Is, was that a was that a different planet? I swear it was. It, it is looking. called Corvus. So there's yeah. a Corvus the ship, and there's Corvus the planet. Well, I mean, the more you know. There's a lot of you know reuse of of names, oh, right? Like, yeah, yeah, dude. I, I'm I'm not like saying it's like oh my gosh, like a lot of people are yeah. like oh we can't have any crossover in names and stuff, and it's like not nah, dude, like it's you can have a ship called the Corvus and then a planet. Like for all we know, maybe it was named after the planet. Like I don't know. Um, it, it is it is kind of funny that when I searched up Corvus Star Wars, I got results for both the ship and the planet. So there you go, there you go. Um, um, okay, I'm gonna go with one of those Raider Two class, but then what do I want to name it? <laughs> you just call it the Corvus. <laughs> Corvus <laughs> 2. What it, um Th this so is going to sound stupid, but you're go you're going to get the reference hopefully. Uh -huh. Instead of instead of calling it the Corvus, you should call it the Atanas. Dishonored? Yeah. Corvo yeah, Atano. 
Yeah. That's pretty cool, dude. Corvo is Latin for raven. Did you know that? Or crow? Something like that? Did you know that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's probably in my subconscious somewhere. I think I told you about it because when we... when. It, they're getting the the external Star Wars stuff here, which is what this segment's all for. When you when I got you or you finally played Dishonored after uh, my recommendation, um, I remember I knew you would love Corvo because you love like ravens and crows. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember being like, his name is is Corvo, uh, and I think yeah. he is like I think he literally his nickname is like the Raven or something or like the Raven of Dunwall or whatever something like that. Well, um, the. The the actual Latin name of crow is is funnily enough Corvus. <laughs> oh, so, there you go. Uh, Corvo absolutely inspired by yeah. crows and ravens. Um, but yeah, I gotta play those other games, man. Dishonor Two is is real good. Yeah, I honestly, I'll let me, let me find something in my room. Uh, sorry, y'all. We're 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 just yapping at this point. It's not even Star we Wars. We are yapping. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it Grayson's the, fun fun machine. <laughs> <laughs> Grayson's fun mobile. Um, <laughs> I don't know, bro. Naming a ship is do, like the thing is, is like, do I want to name it something cool or it's, is it just like, oh my, fa like my family and friends hang out here. Like, do I make it family oriented? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It'd be, we'll call you it. You know how like uh, people call cars mundane names, like myself sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I named my first car Sheila. Well, like in universe, it'd be funny if you named uh, that cruiser uh, Antilles. <laughs> oh, just named it like somebody's last name. I got yeah. it. It's called the Drake. <laughs> Not the rapper. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm gonna change mine to the Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> 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 okay well now you drake means dragon i know okay what if you called it like the the wyvern you know that'd be kind of neat can i call it like the draconis why not it's your sure. ship man uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was going for nathan drake the just call like, it nathan <laughs> i did it. i was like what if i just called it nathan bro that'd be so <laughs> funny <laughs> Yeah, man. I don't know. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Draconis. That's cool. That's Draconis? that's pretty sick. Dope. Yeah. I'll buy two it. class Corvette. Yeah. <laughs> My fan. Come aboard the Draconis, everyone. Come aboard, aboard the Draconis. Uh... You're you are invited. You can come along too. Thanks, man. Yeah. You know that like Pedro Pascal meme he's, where he like turns around and he's like, "You should know this too." Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this episode of Mortis FM, a Star Wars podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, before we give all the little announcements and stuff, um, Cole and I will be out of town next week. However, we are trying to brainstorm a way for us to be able to get an episode to you kind folks, the people at home. We'll keep you updated on the matter of the fact, but the day after Acolyte episode five comes out, we will be in... Uh -huh. Disneyland in on the West Coast. So a, a, ra yep. a rare Cole and Grayson combo public appearance. Um, it's the, so, the, the, the conjunction of the spheres. Yeah, literally, because people, again, if, if you're new here, Cole and I, we live a little bit further apart. Um, we did once upon a time uh, work in Florida for Disney. Yeah. We don't any longer. Um, so... You know, if we'd done the podcast then, I'm sure a lot of people maybe could have found us there, but we didn't. We started last year. However, we are going over to California. So if you are there, I believe that will be on like the 20, the 26th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let, me, let me double check just to clear. Double check. It'll be the win. It'll be Wednesday. So whenever you're listening to this, yeah. you're probably listening to this weekend. It'll be this upcoming Wednesday. Um, and if you see us around, whether you're a content creator or not, I don't care. Just be like, hey, are you guys... Mortis, Mortis FM, a Star Wars podcast. Grayson and Cole, the Cosmic yeah, we Drifter. Will, we will be, uh, we'll be there Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, probably, probably like the whole day. So if you see us in Batu, you see us in Avengers Campus, you see us mm. on the Pinocchio ride. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> give uh, us a, but give us a tap uh, on the shoulder. Yeah. So we're we're, we're going to try to figure out a way to uh, make it work Mortis wise, uh, because mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, there is something coming out at the time, and so we want to be punctual. We don't want to uh, have things too late because 
as as we're kind of anticipating next episode is probably going to be pretty big um so you'll see if we figure something out about that but otherwise uh we will return to you safely (laughs) so look keep your eyes and ears open we don't want to we don't want you guys to be like talk about the next controversial thing it's oh my gosh it's uh yarrow poof is is two centimeters shorter (laughs) Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, anyway, Next you can episode, follow. Kiari Muni is going to be like, gee, I sure do love not being more than 93 BBY. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's like, okay. man, worst year to be okay, born. Okay, Kiari. Has, all right, like, that man. hasn't even happened yet. What is BBY? What is BBY? <laughs> um, you can follow us at Mortis FM basically everywhere. If you like, like I said earlier, if you are listening and you're just dipping your toe in the the <laughs> mortis pool, whatever, uh, don't do that sacred don't, pool. Yeah, don't. Otherwise, you'll become the the mother. The mother. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Subscribe to us if you feel inclined. You can follow me at Shreds the Eight, and you can follow me at the dot cosmic dot drifter on Instagram, and you can also follow my channel, my YouTube channel where I post very, very rarely, uh, the cosmic drifter. It's worth it. When he does post, it's a spicy meatball. It's a spicy meatball. (laughs) Well, thank you for listening to probably the most tangential episode we've ever done. I'm going to say, I would say, um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, obviously like we we're, we're here to talk about star Wars, but, uh, it's all about, you know, just us yapping. So, Hope you enjoyed hey. that, um, and uh, please uh, let us know if uh, if you would like for us to cover anything else. Otherwise, you will see us very soon. Grayson, may the force be with you. Always. <laughs>